This could get a little spicy. How's it going folks? I'm Does with Desfit, and as most of you probably already know, these are two very different devices. One's an amazing smartwatch and one's an amazing sports watch. So this may be considered an unfair comparison. However, the Apple Watch Series 6 and the Garmin Phoenix 6, they are both very popular watches. They're each company's high-end offerings, and they're both great devices in their own respect, which may be a reason why so many of you out there requested this video. So ask and you shall receive. Now you may think that I'm gonna come right out and say that one watch is better than the other, but it's a bit more complicated than that and it really comes down to the features that you need out of a watch and my aim with this video is to help you figure that out so if this video does help you out at all don't be shy about hitting that like button down below so in this video i'll be going over lots of different aspects of these two devices from the sports and fitness features to the smartwatch features to the ecosystems that they live in but let's go ahead and first start out with the hardware in terms of design, well, that's all personal preference. One is a more traditional looking watch, which will probably appeal to those of you who want something that resembles a more traditional timepiece. The other is, well, an Apple Watch, which was unique at one point in time, but they've become so popular that other companies have used it for um, inspiration would be a good way of putting it. But when it comes to durability, this is kind of a no contest. With the Phoenix lineup, it's built for durability with a metal bezel, a solid metal back, metal buttons, and there's even a more durable option with a sapphire glass display. I've dropped Phoenixes, accidentally hit walls with them, and even taken some hard mountain bike crashes on them, and they may not necessarily be as pretty as day one, but they're still working perfectly fine. The Series 6, on the other hand, is going to be much more susceptible to damage since it has a raised glass display with really no bezel to speak of. And just like all the watches I wear, I've accidentally dropped them, I've banged them up against walls, just all the normal stuff that happens in my day-to-day -day life. And for the most part, Apple Watches have been okay, but I do have a small scratch on my Series 5, and then on another occasion, I dropped a different Series 5 on a tile floor and it shattered. So with the Series 6, you probably will have to be a little bit more careful with it than the Phoenix 6, but the nice thing is, is that Apple does offer a sapphire glass screen option that's gonna be available on the stainless steel and titanium models. And then in terms of water resistance, the Series 6 is water resistant down to 50 meters, and then the Phoenix 6 doubles that to 100 meters. And now would probably be a good time to talk about price. The base level Series 6 comes in much less than the base level Series 6. However, once you get into the stainless steel and titanium options with the Series 6, then the prices become a little bit more similar. And then the Phoenix 6, this comes in three different size options, and then the Series 6 comes in two different size options. So you should be able to find a size that's going to work right for you. In terms of comfort, I probably have to give it to the Apple Watch with its rounded corners and the domed heart rate sensor. The Phoenixes are a smidge heavier overall, and I wouldn't call them uncomfortable by any means, but I think the Apple Watches are just a little bit more comfortable to wear. And now let's get into how you actually interact with these devices. So first there's the Series 6, which uses a combination of a touchscreen along with two physical buttons. One of those buttons does double duty as a digital crown, which you can use to scroll through different areas of the watch. The combination of all these elements is pretty darn good for the most part, but once you get into the sports and fitness scenario, it can be a little bit more challenging to use. With the Phoenix 6s, they use five physical buttons, and this works extremely well during activities. You can press a button without even having to look at your watch, which is super convenient. But the drawback with the Phoenix 6 is that navigating through longer menus can be a little bit less convenient without the touchscreen or the digital crown that you find on the Series 6. One tip I do have for you though is that on an Apple Watch, the default thing that you may wanna to do to pause or stop an activity is to swipe to show the screen where you can stop your activity. Another thing that you can do is press both buttons at the same time to pause the activity, which I find to be a little bit more convenient. Just make sure that in your watch settings that you don't have it set to take screenshots when you press both buttons. For displays, again, quite different here where the Series 6 has a super bright and crispy OLED display where the Phoenix 6 uses a transflective display technology. The display of the Phoenix 6 is optimized for great readability outdoors, especially in direct sunlight, but isn't going to be as vibrant as the Series 6. And a big reason for these differences is due to battery life. So with the Garmin displays, they may not be the prettiest to look at, but they consume much less power than an OLED display. And then that brings us to battery life. And that's gonna be a stark difference between these two where you can get a week or two out of a Phoenix, even while recording outdoor activities. And it will depend slightly on the different size model that you choose, where with an Apple Watch, that's only gonna last about a day or two before you have to recharge it, which is not a whole lot. So now let's get into the smartwatch feature. So the Series 6, it is an amazing smartwatch. 
if you own an iPhone because it's not compatible with an Android phone. With the Phoenix 6, well, you can pair this with an Android phone, you can pair it with an iPhone. Heck, you can actually even use the Phoenix 6 all by itself without pairing it to a phone at all. However, you will miss out on a lot of functionality. Apple Watches simply provide the best smartwatch experience if you own an iPhone. It's a seamless integration, allowing for robust text responses, including writing on the screen, voice dictation, emojis, just tons of stuff. And the same thing goes for calls, where you can speak on the watch itself using the built-in speaker and microphone, and then there's all the app integration with other iOS apps. Apple has a huge advantage, of course, since they make both the watch and the phone, so they control both ends of the equation. And with the Phoenix 6, the call and text functionality will depend on which phone platform that you're using. So if you're on an iPhone, you'll be able to receive all the notifications, but you won't be able to interact with them. However, if you're on an Android phone, you will be able to reply to text using predefined responses that you set up in Garmin Connect. And the reason that you can't reply to text on a Garmin device, by the way, has all to do with Apple and nothing to do with Garmin. Garmin definitely wants this functionality. It's just that Apple locks down that functionality to Apple devices. Another advantage with the Series 6 is that there's an option for an LTE model with cellular connectivity. Now, I'm mentioning this in the smartwatch section of this video, but realistically for me, I find the cellular connectivity to be really beneficial in the sports and fitness capacity because most times when I want that sort of connectivity, I want to leave my phone at home, and that's generally when I'm going to be doing an activity where I don't want to carry anything on me. And for music, this is kind of an interesting one where the Series 6, it has the capability to stream music directly to the watch if you have a data connection. And it does also have the capability of storing tracks on the watch itself. But I think as of right now, it's only limited to Apple Music as well as Pandora. However, with the Phoenix 6, you actually have a broader selection of apps that you can use to load music onto the watch itself. So you can use Amazon Music, Deezer, as well as Spotify. But the Phoenix 6 does not have the direct music streaming capability. Okay, so now onto the health, wellness, and fitness features of these devices. So both of them have heart rate sensors, both of them have SpO2 sensors, both can track your steps as well as your calories, and both have sleep tracking amongst a host of other things, but there are gonna be some differences between these two. So although both these devices provide sleep tracking, the Phoenix 6 provides much more detail than what the Series 6 does natively, where you can get a sleep score, time spent in different sleep stages, as well as quite a bit of feedback, which also feeds into a data point on Garmin devices called body battery, which gives an indication of your energy levels throughout the day and how well you recover throughout the night. The sleep tracking was initially not so great on Garmin devices, but I have seen improvements and it's a lot better now. On the Series 6, it's pretty accurate in terms of tracking sleep, but the data it collects is kind of basic on the native app. It just provides you with how long you slept with a very basic chart with little detail. It's accurate in tracking the time I went to bed and woke up, but that's about all the information that the native app gives you. However, there are a lot of third-party apps out there that can provide a lot more data. Both devices do offer an SpO2 sensor for measuring blood oxygen levels. I find the Series 6 to be a bit closer to a fingertip SpO2 sensor than the Phoenix 6, but realistically, neither of these are medical grade devices in this respect, so just take these figures with a grain of salt. However, when it comes to the heart rate sensor, that's where the Series 6 takes the cake. So the heart rate sensor on the Series 6, the Series 5, as well as the Series 4, they are some of the best wrist-based optical heart rate sensors on the market today. Apple's really done some magic in this area, and it's not perfect by any means, but it is basically the best I've ever seen. GPS performance on both these devices is pretty good, but the Phoenix 6 will provide a bit more detail when it comes to the actual GPS tracks. One strange thing though with Apple Watches is that when you go to start an activity, it doesn't really tell you whether or not you have GPS reception, whereas with pretty much every other fitness device out there, it'll give you an indication of a GPS lock. Even so, I haven't really ever had any big issues with this, and almost all the time it's able to pick up the GPS signal quickly, and I haven't lost any total distance. But when it comes to the overall sports and fitness capabilities, the Phoenix 6 really has the upper hand here. It's a device that's purpose-built for sports and fitness. There are just a ton of different activity profiles that you can choose from that provide you with tons of data to scour over. There's mapping on the Phoenix 6 Pro and the Sapphire models. Plus, it's going to be super durable for whatever you may throw at it. The Series 6, on the other hand, does have a lot of sport profiles to choose from with their native workout app, but the data it collects is more on the basic end of things, and you can't dive in to see the level of detail that you can on the Phoenix 6. Now, you can extend the functionality of the Series 6 with third-party apps to get lots more data, like for cycling, you could use Cycle Meter, you could use a View Ranger for maps and navigation, there's a Strava app that you can use directly on the watch itself since the native workout app doesn't integrate with Strava easily, there's even a Stride app for using with a Stride foot pod, there's really just a ton of apps to choose from. 
but this does also translate into the external sensors that each of these devices can support. So the Phoenix 6 has just a ton of external sensors that you can hook up from heart rate sensors to speed and cadence sensors, power meters, foot pods, electronic bike shifting, Garmin Vario lights and radars, bike trainers, just lots of stuff. And with the Phoenix 6, it compared to both Bluetooth as well as Ant Plus external sensors, which opens up the doors to lots more options than, than what the Series 6 can do, which is only paired to Bluetooth sensors. And it is great that you can extend the functionality out of the Series 6 with a lot of those third-party apps. But one thing to keep in mind is that you may have to download a lot of different types of apps to replicate the functionality that you can get out of the Phoenix 6. And those apps may not necessarily work seamlessly together where with the Phoenix 6, it's all just kind of built right in. For training features, both these devices offer their own different flavor. So with the Phoenix 6, it offers a lot in terms of training feedback and lots of data to pour over. It also has training guidance along with some coaching elements to go along with all that. It's definitely for somebody who likes to analyze their data a lot. And with the Series 6, it doesn't offer much in terms of guidance, but you can benefit from the Apple Fitness Plus platform, which offers Peloton style guided workouts that are really easy to get into and fall along. But this kind of comes around full circle to the ecosystems that these watches live in. So the Apple Watch ecosystem, it's a really well thought out integration of their watch to their phone, to the iPad, to their laptops, all the way to the Apple TV. So with Apple Fitness Plus, you'll be able to do the workout on your iPad while being able to integrate with your Apple Watch seamlessly to see your data on the screen itself. Apple's devices are built with their other devices in mind, which makes for a really nice experience. Like one of my favorite things is if I'm using Apple Maps to navigate on my phone, it'll actually give me a little haptic feedback on my Apple Watch when I need to make a turn, which is pretty darn cool. But Garmin does do the same sort of thing, just more on the fitness side of things with their accessories. So Garmin has their HRM Pro heart rate strap, which collects much more data than just heart rate. There's gonna be integration with Garmin Vario radar and lights, power meter pedals, bike trainers, just a lot of accessories that integrate pretty much nearly seamlessly with their devices. And the nice thing is, is that you can access all this data through the Garmin Connect smartphone app, but all that data is also gonna be accessible through a web browser for those of you who really wanna dive in deep. The Series 6 is very cohesive when it comes to the smartwatch and lifestyle experience, but maybe not as much on the fitness end of things, especially if you're trying to replicate a lot of the functionality that you can get with the Phoenix 6 that comes straight out of the box. So when it comes to choosing between the Series 6 and the Phoenix 6, well, it's not so cut and dry and there's a lot of things to consider, such as the fact that the Series 6, it's gonna provide an amazing smartwatch experience if you own an iPhone. There's the battery life, which is gonna be a night and day difference between the two. There's the fact that the Series 6 is an amazing heart rate sensor, but the Phoenix 6 can pair to a lot more external sensors, plus it collects just a ton of data. Anyhow, these were just my thoughts on these two devices, but definitely let us know in the comment section down below what you think of both of these, as well as which one you would choose for your needs. Anyhow, if this video did help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. In the meantime, have fun out there and we will see you in the next video.